have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Time was a game I wrote a written review on it and I wasn't very nice to it. I'm gonna to have to go back and update that a little bit because I played it more. I was actually gonna get rid of it and I was like, you know what, I like the network so much, and the networks is a superior game. I said, but I want to try this game again. And while it's not a perfect game, it has its problems. Let's talk about those problems. Uh, the problem is it's going first is very, very important. The second thing is there's a component issue with the colors, they don't match. Um, you know, it's, it's just got some weird things, like the sequel can be on television before the original, and, and so for some reason the cards double themselves, like, it's copies of the same show and, and actors and stuff, it just doesn't make any sense, I don't know why they did that. But what you do get here is a game that has a little bit of work replacement that you do at the beginning, with this auction bidding mechanism for shows and, and the people who fulfill the shows, the actors and directors and writers. Um, and then you have the second part, which is your scheduling. We're going to be scheduling these shows out. And the game slows down a little bit here, because what you're going to do is the first player is going to schedule his, and then the second one's going to counter schedule, and the third guy is going to counter schedule, and the best you can. When you teach this game, you just need to stress how important those stars are and how important it is to match the icons. Uh, being able to the primary demographic and getting first pick of those cubes is uber, uber important. It's... I think the first time we played it, we played with a rule wrong, which just killed the game. Um, and sometimes that can, that can gray you a little bit. I don't think it did us, but I, I felt like, you know, this is a, this game's broken. Why? So when we started playing it the correct way, it opened itself up a little bit, and I liked the choices that you have. Now, comparing this to Networks, I think Networks is the better game. But it's also a different game. This game's a little bit more heavy, a little more thinky. You have to count things up in advance. And there are ways. When you're picking those cubes up, there are ways to kind of screw each other on that. You're always going to try to take what your competitor needs first that you also need before you take what they don't have access to that you also need. But that's just the nature of the beast in the game. And there are going to be parts where you kind of fall behind. But the scoring cards sometimes play to those people that are in last place rather than the first place. Like you may want to spend all your money because you're going to get extra victory points for that. So that's kind of unique. Um... I think the better player is going to normally win this game. There is a lot of moving parts. So you got the bidding, you got the worker placement, you got the scheduling and counter scheduling, then you got the choice of the cubes that are coming off. So it's it's definitely not what you would call a streamlined game. It's got a four different mechanisms that are kind of going on, but they're fun and I like it. It's just it can be a harsh game. Uh, I think that's okay. I think every game has to be forgiving. I don't feel like this game is forgiving at all. It, it's harsh, you need to think things through, you need to make good decisions, and you'll be rewarded when you make good decisions, and you're going to be punished when you make poor decisions. The good news is, your good decisions and poor decisions are in comparison to the other players. So, if you're playing with a whole novice group, I think you're going to do fine. But I think if somebody, it's not Food Chain Magnet, where it can get out of hand, and, it, and somebody knows the cards, but they're just going to blow you out of the water, and you have no choice. It's not going to be that bad. But the scoring is super tight in this game. Going first is super important. And counter-programming. And not just getting the best show, but looking around what everybody else is getting. Okay, he needs a lot of brown. He needs a lot of green. So I'm going to get a lot of red. Is there red on the board? You know, there's some things that are just kind of flowing in this. You need to stop, slow down, and think it through. That tends to make the game a little bit longer than you want it to be. Okay? Which, which may be a problem with the game. But you can always play like just a... There's, there's two seasons, basically. There's the, the, the first three rounds and then the four, five, and six round. And if you wanted to play one round, I think you could. I think the game may be a little more swingy that way. Uh, but you definitely could do that. But with the full experience, I think you can plow through it pretty quickly. Um, four might be pushing it time-wise. You might have a little bit more downtime with the scheduling that you want to. But other than that, I mean, it's just grabbing cubes and the worker placement. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. I'm going to go ahead and recommend this one, uh, Primetime, which is different than my written review where I said steer clear of it. But my, my opinion has changed on this game because I've played it more. 
And I think that if you're willing to take patience with a game and play it out and try it out and learn a game, I think that you're really going to appreciate this game and like it a little bit more. And it's a shame that it's not a game I think people are going to like when they first sit down to play. I think it has too many different mechanisms going on in the game, which are going to turn some people off who might play a game once or twice and not really dive deeper into it. So, you know, I'm going to recommend this game. It's a keeper for me, but it's a game that you're going to have to play and commit to playing a few times to really appreciate the strategy that will come out with multiple plays. So, keeper for me. Be on the lookout. At minimum, try this one out. If you're a big fan of Networks, still try this one. It's a little bit heavier than Networks, but try it out. Here is Prime Time, which has uh, got some decent components. This was a Kickstarter game. I like how they're kind of looking at the television and watching it. You are going to get a rule book. Now, the rule book is kind of long and probably not the easiest thing in the world to use. Uh, it's got the components down here. It's just there's no overview. So there's the setup and how some card works. It's just not a really good gameplay overview, so you just kind of go through the whole game. Here's all the scoring stuff on the back for a nice, easy reference. I'll come back to the game board. Here is what the game looks like inside. You're going to get these for each of the players in different colors, and it's kind of so you can set up your weekly schedule. You're going to get your clients. These are really cute how they look like the action cards or whatever they're called. And there'll be different things that you'll be trying to get. So three red and three brown. And you get quite a few of these. You won't use all of these in a game. You're going to get a few of these, which will be just extra victory points you can get for being in all the different genres. Uh, here's your money. Money's going to be these little cardboard dollar bills and fives and tens. And these are pretty good. Very preferable to paper money. You're going to get a draw bag because you will be drawing cubes out of a bag this is a nice cloth bag and you get regular just good old-fashioned cubes I guess it is important to note that some of the cubes are miscolored some of the colors don't match what they're supposed to on the cards I should go ahead and point that out you get some nice wooden cube uh, scoring cubes you can see one of my grays is a half circle there not too great you're gonna get a first player marker this is R&D first player you'll be stealing that you can see it has a little bit of an insert. It's not perfect for this game, but it does a pretty good job. You're going to get some talent cards. Let me kind of show you what these look like. So I think the artwork on here is very beautiful. It's, it's like a realistic caricature almost. Uh, but I really like the artwork really well. The, the icons are really good to see. There's always a little bit of a paragraph just to kind of fill you in. Does that look like Ron Howard? Nope, it's Dan Calm. Uh-huh. The long-haired dudes. Must be some kind of boy band. The Bold and the Rest, not The Bold and the Beautiful. The Grown-Ups. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to get with the Talent Cards. You're going to have a number of Show Cards. Um, and these will have like characters of shows. What's that smell? We all play that game on a road trip, right? The Big Break. Not Prison Break, The Big Break. Amerigo 2. Uh, which is a sequel, Helping Hand 2, which is a sequel. Now, one of the bad things about these is they're actually redundant sometimes. You'll see the same one more than once, which is kind of weird. Undercover Ace, Ogre's Den, Time Machine Junkie 2. Um, so th these are pretty good quality cards. I like it. I mean, it's very, very good. Um, everything on there is easy to use. Once again, some of the components don't match the colors they're supposed to. And these are just like your generic reruns that you'll have. They're... Pretty plain. They kind of look like a film strip, which I think is neat. And then you're going to have these boardroom cards. There's three different types. Three different characters with possible different scoring that you'll have. Um, and it's pretty easy to see in the instruction book. It does a pretty good job. So you won't use all of these in one game. So the board's going to utilize worker placement. So that's what this is going to be at the top. You're going to have the talent and the shows come out. And here will be action spots that you can use. There will be cubes across the bottom that you'll be using in a scoring track around it. And this right here will kind of tell you what's going to be coming out in the future. It's a fairly easy one to use. Uh, this is the number of rounds. Here's the hotness factor, which we'll explain, and the turn order over here. It's a pretty functional board. Not too bad. I like how this has pictures and kind of tells you what's going on. And this will be covered by cards. So very good board. Not flashy, but works pretty well. 
The rule book's okay. Um, I wish there was like a condensed version of it. So once you kind of read through it, you understand it, which it does a fairly good job at. It does have four or five different mechanisms in it that, that, that the game flows, but it doesn't feel like one game. So I just wish there was like a cheat sheet or a player aid or something that you could just go through the list so you don't skip anything because there's a lot of little things that you do in this game. Instead of having to have the whole book out and flip through it because you will forget something. And sometimes things only happen in the third round and the sixth round. So you want to be careful that you don't skip something because it can screw up the whole game. So while I like the rule book for teaching, it's not the best thing for your playing and going through a turn. What I'm going to do here first, I'm going to try to show you how the board works. And I'm going to show you how you schedule your turns. So what you down here, have here at the bottom is you're going to have cubes on each day of the week, Monday through Friday. Each of the cubes is going to represent a different type of viewer. Uh, the book doesn't explain what these cubes represent, but I assume they might represent like elderly viewers or younger viewers or sports fans or whatnot. So on Mondays, let's just use colors, you know you're going to have two yellow viewers and a brown. On Tuesday, two green and a pink, which I believe is red. They don't match properly. Um, and the forecast is going to tell you what's coming down. So at the end of the purchasing, it's going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So these will come out and add to the days. Okay, so what you're going to be doing on a turn is you're going to be setting out a number of workers. And I'll explain how these are. So these are the shows that you'll be putting out. And let's say you got this show. This show, the minimum bid is $4. It's a single show. And it's a dramedy. And it, it will take up these kind of viewers. One blue, one red, one green, and one yellow. And you kind of know that going in. If you were to get a talent, which you can attach to it, one of each type, his minimum bid is 12. He's a writer now. And he gives you two stars, which I'll explain later. But he has the ability to fill up any of these colors that are shown. So that could be a pretty powerful duo right there. But anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. So what you're going to do on your turn is you're going to put one of your workers down and you can place them on anything you want. Here at the top where the cards are, you're literally bidding what these are. So if you wanted Johnny Cage, who's an action star, his minimum bid is 10. So I'd have to bid at least 10 to go there. Now, if Purple wanted to come in and also bid on him, that's fine. They can bid on him. They just have to go higher, either 12, 14, 16, or 18. Let's say they go 16. My guy stays here. Then I could come back in. Let's say Blue came in here and he wanted to bid on a show. He might bid. This show's a minimum of four. He'll go ahead and bid six because he doesn't want somebody to come in and I'll bid him. And that's kind of how that is going to work, okay? So these will stay here for right now. I'll get back to that. You also have some slots down here that you can take. You can take this one. You pay a dollar for research and development, and then you get the first player token. But let's say Gray wanted to go there also. Gray goes on top of you. He'll also pay for that spot, and he becomes first player. So if you're the first person to go here, you're not necessarily going to be first unless somebody goes over there. Whoever goes there last becomes first player. And first player is super important in this game. So what's going to happen is it kind of gives you an advantage if you're last in order. You can actually take this spot last and become first player for the rest of the round. Archives, there's two spots here. And they're going to give you one of these reruns. Now, reruns are a one-time shot. You can do once, and they take any cube that you want. So they're a one-time use, any cube. And they're good if you've got nothing else to fill your spot. They're going to give you cubes. And I'll explain why cubes are important later. At the golf course, it's very easy. If you go here, you just get a victory point. Um, if you go to HR, and let's say you had a, an actor, but you have nowhere to spend him or you don't want to. If he's a gold worker versus a silver one, a gold worker, if you go to this spot, you can not use him for the round, thus flipping him over, and you're going to get four bucks back, and you'll get one dollar for a gold. That's not a spot I see a whole lot of people utilize. Now, the PR is nice. If you go to the PR spot, you can either swap a cube on two nights. They don't have to be adjacent. Maybe you want to swap it with Thursday. And you can kind of get the cubes that you want to be in the spot for your uh, shows. That'll make sense in a little while. Or you can take one from the forecast and put it on any day of the week that you want. And now Tuesday is not going to get a cube for that. And Friday is going to get an extra one. So if you're scheduling a lot on Friday and you need those colors, so that's what the HR is, or the PR is going to do is allow you to put it at different places. At the end of the round, you'll get all your stuff. 
Now, the guy who vo who bid on this but didn't win it, he is going to be able to pick his up and go anywhere that somebody else didn't go. Okay? So, let's say somebody went to the golf course. I could go to the golf course. Or, I can go back and bid on one of these guys. And even though he has a minimum bid of 12, nobody went there. So, I can just grab him for the 4 bucks. Okay? And that can be a great way to steal somebody. But most of the time, nobody's going to believe somebody that great just sitting out there. So, you're getting your cards... And you're going to be utilizing this up here. And that's the first part of the game. That's the worker placement part. So I'm going to put this here just so you can kind of see what's going on. So you can see the cubes that are available on the different nights. And you can see my schedule. So what's going to happen is in turn order, we're going to be able to set a schedule. So I'm just going to kind of show you how this works. So I have a rerun card. I'm going to put this on Wednesday night. Now we're going to go in turn order. So if I go first and you go second... You're gonna be, I have to put my stuff out first. Now, this is a disadvantage because you can counter-program me. So if I got nothing great on Wednesday, you might want to shift something to Wednesday. Uh, but going first is important because I'll be able to get cubes before you, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's say I want to put this talent show on here. And this is a show that I got. I can get any of these cubes. It's a series, so it'll stay on the life of it, and it's a reality show. This is like American Idol. So I will try to look and see what day of the week might be a good day for me to grab some cubes here. Um, and these would have came out, these forecast ones. So one for each day of the week. So I think this Tuesday looks really good. Because I need I could use two green, brown. I could use all of those if I wanted to. So I'm going to put the talent show on that. And I'm going to schedule these two long-haired dudes to go. I put this guy on Monday. But look, I'm going to put an action show on Monday. And this guy has a gun. So instead of placing him on Tuesday, I'm going to place him there. So once I'm done, I'll just be like, I'm finished. And then what's going to happen is... Let's see before I finish. I want to show you this. I'm going to put Jeff Spencer on this show. So now I'm finished. So what you're going to do is count up any stars that you have. This guy has two stars. And that just means he has a primary demographic. Which means I'm going to get to take at least two first um, when we do... And if you have any that match. So this, this gun... My show type, which is action, is going to match this. So that gives him, a, theoretically, one star. One primary demographic. And the other players may have that, too. So what that means is I'm going to be able to take, before we get into taking the cubes, I'll be able to take a couple extra cubes. This show can take two, and this one can take one because of the matching icons. So you want to match the icons or get these stars if possible. It's a pretty big advantage. So uh, being first player, I'm going to take one cube. And the other player is going to take this brown one. And we'll just move it out of the way to signify that somebody else took that. Boom, boom. He's gone. So this guy can take another one or this guy can take one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one here for Monday. Because I'm going to put one on here. Now, at the end of the round, if you don't have any cubes, you're going to lose some cards. So you don't want that to happen. So this guy can have two. I'm going to take one more and put it on the show. So basically, I have this one covered and I'm good. So once everybody's got... the the dem primary demographics they can get, in this case two, and this one one, that round would end. And then we would just take turns taking um, cubes, however we see fit. Okay. At the end of the round, after you do all of that, now you can totally block people in this. You can you can take a cube they need if it fits on your, on your, on your cards, and you can totally screw somebody over. And sometimes you just pause and be like, okay, nobody has yellow on Tuesday. So this, this yellow is free to sit there. Um... Uh, uh, player one had nothing scheduled for Thursday and Friday, so I'm not even going to take those cubes. I'm going to compete with Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday against you because I know that you have this. So there's a total screwage factor here that you can do to people, and you'll do it quite often. So for every cube you have, you're going to get two bucks, and that's how you're going to get more. And then when you're done, you've got to be careful they go back on the correct day. So everybody will put those back on the correct days they should be at. But you're going to get money for doing so, okay? At the end of the third round, at the end of the sixth round, you will then score. And the way scoring works is whoever's higher on the hotness track, which will be over here, which is the score of your biggest turn. So if I'm on three and you're on one, and I'm ahead of you, I'm going to get one victory point for being ahead of you. The show with the most talent cards will get three victory points. So whatever show has the most red cards with them, well, they can get three victory points. And so down, two for next and one for the final one. Whoever has the best show, the one with the highest primary demographic cube potential. So once again, whichever one has the most stars plus the most matching icons. Uh, in this case, this show would be worth two. In this case, this has no stars, but it does have a matching icon, one. So my American Idol ripoff would be the better show. 
And then you're going to score the boardroom cards, which will be different ways to score. Now, at the end of each round, you can attempt to get these. If you have attained four red cubes and a brown, or four brown cubes, it's just random, but there's different combinations. You'll also get money for getting this. So this might be something you want to focus on, too. At the end of six rounds, whoever has the most victory points wins the game. I am going to recommend Prime Time, but I'm going to put a caveat on that or an asterisk and say it's for people who don't mind multiple plays of a game. I think you're going to appreciate this game a lot more the more you play it, the more you kind of understand it, and the more you see the strategies that are in the game. You know, Networks is probably over here, which is a nice and light game, Lord of Vegas, something like that. You have Food Chain Magnet, which is out of control. If You can get totally blown away in that game. It's not even going to try to keep it fair for everybody. It's come and play the best you can and may the strong survive. Prime Time is going to be more on that side. It's not a gateway game. There's a few things going on. It can be punishing. It can be harsh. It doesn't have a lot of points that are scored. So even if you lose like 10 to 6, it doesn't feel like it's that far, even though it's a mountain away. And that's okay. So I think it's more important that you feel like it's it's really far away. And I think it's going to pull you back in. This is one that I think if you play once, you might not be that impressed with. A couple times, you might not be. But if you get that three to five range with this game, I think once the strategies kind of sit in and you get over some of the nuances of it, I think that it will be measured better in your mind. With that said, if you're the type of guy who plays a brand new game once, sticks it on the shelf, and never touches it again, this isn't going to be the game to get. I think this one's like a fine wine. You're going to appreciate it a little bit more. With that said, it's not a perfect game. It's not even the best. TV game, that I would say networks. Um, but I think it's severely underrated. I think if more people played this and gave it a chance and could get past the harshness. If you don't like harshness in the game, pass this one by, stop this video, move on. I think that you'll enjoy this one. It's not a gateway game. It's not for newbies. It is for gamers only. Only gamers apply here. So that's prime time. I'm going to keep it. Try this one out. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing games.